Okay, I'm Jody and this is the last part of the LPIC module one. We talked about hardware, how operating system sees those hardware. Now we will review a couple of uh, commands and also a couple of concepts about the drivers in the kernel. When I say kernel, I mean the kernel of the operating system, which is the Linux itself by the technical meaning. The most internal part of the operating system which controls and communicates with the hardware. In general, when we say operating system, sometimes we also mean larger components, like even someone may consider a browser part of the operating system because you install Ubuntu and you have that. Anyway, uh, the first commands we are going to review are LSUSB, LSPCI, LSBlock, and LS hardware. You know the LS, which shows the files. These are not related, just the name is related. These are not part of the LS command. LS shows files. We have something which is called LSUSB, which shows USB devices. And it's very easy and straightforward. LSUSB. It says this computer has three USB components and nothing is connected to it other than a tablet. If you do this on a computer with more USB devices, you will see things like a USB keyboard or a hub or a webcam, a camera or whatever you have. But LSUSB shows all the connected USB devices. LSPCI should be more fun on this device. You can see one USB, uh, one PCI bridge, one ID interface, one VGA compatible controller, which is my graphic card, one Ethernet controller, which my, which is my, uh, what they call it, network card. We have this virtual guest services, multimedia audio controller, one USB controller, which is a USB controller, which is connected to my PCI. Other USBs will connect to this and other stuff. Another SATA for hard disk. Uh, this the first one should be my CD-ROM, I believe. This is my hard disk. So you had LSUSB. Sorry, connected, always remember, LSUSB, and you have LSPCI. Something else is LS block. It shows you all of the block devices. Block devices in Linux are the devices which you can read or write a block of data to and from them. That would be your disks, your memory, your ROM here. You can see I have one hard disks, which is... Uh, my first disk, it has two partitions, partition one and partition two. Sorry, let me fix this arrow. So SDB one and SDB two. I have one ROM, which is the ROM my computer boots from maybe or something. Read only memory and I have four gigabytes of RAM, LS block shows this. Also, there is one more command. Sometimes this is not installed out of the box, which is LS hardware. This shows you a lot of information about the hardware and tells you that it is better to run this as the super user. So I will do sudo super user do LS hardware. It says you what's your password. Check if I can be the super user. I say yes, I can. And it will show me a lot of info about the, my system. It says it runs a Fedora. It's a computer. Good. It has a core of this motherboard. The core. My core has a motherboard. And it has a BIOS from this company. It has this much memory. One physical ID. It has this CPU. And lot, lots of other information which you can go through. When sitting on a new computer, most of the time I try this once to see what I have, how it works, how many network cards I have, and other stuff. So, we had four commands here, relatives of the 
LS, although totally unrelated technically to the LS itself. LS USB, LS PCI, LS block, and LS hardware. But we have one more concept which you should know, and it's loadable kernel modules. When you have a hardware, your operating system should know how to communicate with this. This happens by drivers. When you have a Windows system, most of the time you are installing drivers to make things work. Older days, we used to do this more. Now more and more drivers are inside the Windows itself. Whenever there is a hardware, operating system should have a driver for it, should know how to communicate with that hardware. Then when you are programming, you just tell OS what to do with the hardware. OS uses its drivers to do that and answers you back. So you don't need to know about the drivers. But what's the problem? Many of the hardware vendors do not provide good or at all drivers for the Linux machines. If you buy a new fancy printer with lots of capabilities, most of the times it doesn't. Those specific cap capabilities won't work under Linux because you don't have the Linux driver for them. This is bad. And this is bad of the hardware creators. You can search for Linux Torvalds answer to NVIDIA about the drivers. It's a little bit rude, but it's okay. So that's why we sometimes have problems with the drivers. But the good news is the Linux kernel, I mean Linux, has most of the needed drivers already installed. It's 100% batteries included. So if you buy a new hardware, connect it to your computer and check it on your system, you will see that it's working. Most of the times it's like this. You don't need drivers in Linux because Linux already has most of the drivers, reverse engineered or by the vendors. Anyway, it has the drivers. Even if it loads the drivers, you don't need to restart because it is uses loadable kernel modules, dot ko files. Why it's using them? Because as I told you, Linux kernel has drivers for most of the hardwares in the world. This will make the kernel bloated and huge. So what they do is they separate these drivers in KO files and loads them only when needed. So if you connect a new webcam to your Linux, Linux will see it, will load the related driver and your webcam is working. No need to reboot, nothing. You can check what drivers you have, remove some of the modules, add the modules. I will show you how. The modules are located at lib modules. The most common command we use is ls mod, ls modules. Then if you want to remove something, you can say remove that module. You can say insert that module to load that module, but you need to give it the complete path of the module, which is not very easy. So most people use mod probe how is it okay thank you don't tell anyone because it's not mode it is module so you go with mode prop and you can load a module without needing to give all the path because it's all props for it and reads the module and loads it let's have a look if I say ls mode, it says, okay, these are all the modules you have in your system. If I go up in the beginning, you see that it says, okay, you have this module. This is the size of this module and used by how many other modules or subsystems. For example, TLS is a good example. It provides HTTPS connections, TLS encryptions to the kernel. It is not being used at the moment by anyone. So I can say, remove this module from the kernel. I can say RM mode TLS. It will tell you operation not permitted. You don't have enough access. What you do, you run with sudo. So, okay, what's your password? This is it. Now TLS is removed. If I do a LS module, TLS is not there anymore because I removed that driver from the kernel. If you have a new hardware, you may need to load a specific module for it. 
One very famous one is AWL Wi-Fi, which provides most of the drivers for most of drivers for most of the Wi-Fi devices. So if I want to load this again, I can say ins mode. I have to give the complete path, which I don't know. So I will say mod probe uh, TLS. It says, okay, what you said. Okay, mod probe TLS. Operation not permitted. On, normal users cannot add modules to the kernel. Only root can. So now it is there. I can say IWL Wi-Fi. Now IWL Wi-Fi module is loaded. And if I have a wireless card, it should work. And what else? Sometimes you cannot remove modules because they are being used by someone else. In that case, you have a switch, which says switch F, dash F, force this RM mode, and it will force this removal. So we covered LS mode. You know the modules. You have the understanding of the kernel modules. You can remove them. If you, are, if you have a laptop with a wireless card, you can try this and you will see that your wireless card is gone and it will go back when you again do a mod probe. And now we are just doing this manually. If you want to make them permanent, you have to check places like there, like etc modules or etc mod probe D to make these changes permanent. We will see these later. But now you have an understanding after all these modules. What are hardwares? What are different kinds of hardware? What are PCIs, USBs? What is a firmware? Then you saw how slash sys and slash dev help you to understand this hardware, helps kernel to understand this hardware and provide them to you here. And also you have an understanding of the proc, how the processes are built inside the memory, inside the mind of the kernel and how you can see them, communicate with them, check some data. And also you have an understanding of the kernel modules. You can load them, you can reload them, you can remove them and different things will happen. This was the most difficult part of the LPIC. It was abstract. It was not very hands-on. You cannot see the exact results. Later, it will become easier and easier. Be with me. Jody, I will be glad if you subscribe and use this free book, linuxfirst.com.